Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, we are waiting on Kathy, it looks like still. I'm going to go ahead and call us to order and do roll call. I will start with Tracy Barrows. Here. Wendy Smith. Here. And I see Kathy logging in right now. I'm just doing roll call. Okay. So Kathy is here. <laughs> I'm here. I am also here. We are present and accounted for. Welcome everyone tonight to our March board workshop. Um, today we have um, one regular business item to get us started, um, one action item. So the first item on the agenda is regular business instructional and administrative support services with board action. Um, we are here, our first item is to approve the superintendent's contract um, for Dr. Jeff Snell beginning July 1st. Do I have a motion? All motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you both. Um, does anyone wanna add anything to the conversation before we take a vote? I'll just say that I'm very excited to have this amazing human being come and join our school district. He just brings so much positive energy and so much understanding of what um, children need. And um, I'm just thrilled to be um, offering him this contract. Yeah, I, I'll echo what Kathy said. Everybody is very, very excited um, to have Dr. Snell uh, join us here in Vancouver. Uh, we've certainly got a lot of very positive uh, feedback from all kinds of different constituencies. And so there's definitely a lot of excitement and enthusiasm um, to welcome him to our district. Um, I also actually want to extend thanks to Kyle for kind of taking the lead in the process for putting this um, contract together uh, on behalf of the board. Um, the contract is very reflective of the priorities that the board um, identified. And so uh, you did an excellent job. And Marilee, thank you also for all of your help in putting it together too. Uh, and I just wanna also um, thank Dr. Snell for um, helping us craft a uh, contract that is both responsible and very reflective of the priorities and the values of the district. Tracy, did you want to add? Yeah, um, I will just echo what my fellow board members have said as well. I'm very excited to welcome um, Jeff back to Vancouver School District. Um, I think throughout the process, we were just really impressed with his collaborative approach, um, just really his specific um, plans that he had for moving our district forward. Um, and I am just really looking forward to um, getting to work with him um, on behalf of the district and uh, look forward to this transition. So I'm just going to add, um, it was, it's been a pleasure working with Jeff so far, and I just look forward to um, this kind of ongoing relationship and the transition. Um, as Anyone watching knows this was a very thorough search process. And so um, this was a decision we, we made after a very lengthy review of a lot of great candidates. So thank you to everyone involved that supported the process. Um, Jefferson and Aaron had some late nights. Um, I wanna thank Brett for your support in running numbers for us as we worked on the contract and Marilee <laughs> was a great um, resource as well. And then Kathy, thank you so much for all of your support as we kind of start this transition. Um, so I think with that, I'm gonna, we can take a vote. Um, if uh, Jefferson or Aaron, if you could promote Dr. Snell to panelists so he can join us. Doing so now. Do, uh, Dr. Snell, if you could promote him to panelists, perfect. Okay, so I will go ahead and start the vote with uh, Tracy Barrows. Approve. Kathy Decker. Approve. Wendy Smith. Approve. 
And I also approve, so the motion passes. Welcome, Dr. Snell. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's, um, I, I was just reflecting that I was sitting in the same room, you know, maybe a month and a half ago, getting nervous for the public interview um, and waiting for Travis Bowe to come on and getting promoted to panelist. And it's a little different um, feeling this time. I just uh, feel so humbled um, that, you know, people would want me to come back as superintendent and to lead this great district and to support um, the amazing students and staff and so many people that care so deeply about the children of Vancouver. And so super excited to get started um, and uh, um, really grateful to the board. And, and, you know, in particular, I think, Wendy, you called out Kyle trying to, you know, just work through all the logistics and um, try to help make sure that um, the contract reflects the desire of the board um, and that we have a strong foundation to build forward. Um, and so looking forward to a lot of individual conversations and group conversations. I know that um, already had some community outreach and looking forward to checking in with different groups and then visiting the schools um, this spring and uh, really ready to hit the, the ground running um, July 1st. So thank you so much for your support and um, really grateful to, for you, um, to you for this opportunity. Well, thank you. And thank you for getting going, diving in already. Wonderful. Well, um, with that action um, complete, we are moving into our regular workshop portion of the evening. And the first portion is contracts. I'm going to turn this over, Kathy, to you or Brett um, for the contracts. You bet. So I'm going to quickly turn it over to Brett. He has seven contracts for your review. So Brett, you're on. All right. Thank you. Uh, jumping right in, our first item is a recommendation to accept purchase agreement number 2019-018. This is an HVAC improvement project at Fort Vancouver High School. As you've read, this replaced some boilers and upgraded the control systems that operate those uh, HVAC components. Uh, this is a project that was delivered under the Department of Enterprise Services program, which is a statewide program that really helps us maintain really high standards in terms of design, construction, and commissioning. Um, and then are, there's also the added benefit of some ongoing monitoring of energy savings associated with these projects under this program. So um, we are happy to say that we are in the, uh, the position to recommend another of these contracts with, um, or excuse me, that we accept the, the completed contract with Will Dan Abacus of Beaverton, Oregon in the amount of $778,559 plus Washington sales tax, except for retainage, which is, as you know, held for 45 days. Any questions on accepting this Will Dan project? I just have a question about the um, more the need for HVAC improvements. I mean, I know those were in a lot of the plans um, for the bond projects. This, the current state, because I know the HVAC systems have been kind of a topic when we've been talking about reopening. So the status of the current HVAC system is sufficient. We're just doing improvements. Is that correct or? Yeah, the, this particular project was originally built into the um, bonds uh, project list, you know, going back to 2017. So this is aging equipment that needed to be replaced. Um, your question it kind of invokes a lot of other new phenomena around COVID and everything else. So I know that our planning team is, as we speak, going through other buildings that weren't necessarily identified as the squeakiest of wheels for bond funding, but now that we have some potential to use ESSER funding for improved air quality, um, we are going to take another pass at all of our HVAC systems and look where there might be opportunities to improve air circulation um, and upgrade some of those components. We're, we're again in the midst of that work right now, but it, it's very timely your question because with ESSER and possibility of even some available bond funds at the end, extra bond funds, um, those are certainly a new priority that's emerged as a result of COVID. Yeah, I just I just want to make sure that for anybody that is 
you know, wondering like, oh, why are we getting HVAC improvements? Is the current system not, you know, because there's been questions about, you know, is the current system good enough to be returning into in-person school? So it is, it's just a planned improvement, it sounds like. Yes. Okay. All right, any other questions on the Wildan contract acceptance? All right, then let's move on to another acceptance of a completed project. This one was purchase agreement number 2019-023. It was the classroom addition at Eisenhower Elementary. Uh, this was originally awarded to Team Construction, LLC. Uh, as I mentioned, they built two classrooms. This was um, partially funded by the uh, K-3 class size reduction grant from the state, as you might remember, which was a major player in our bond program overall. Uh, the work has been completed and inspected, and so it's our uh, recommendation that you accept the contract with team construction in the final amount of $1,658,938.59 plus Washington sales tax except retainage. Any questions on the Eisenhower project? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to a recommendation to approve purchasing agreement number 2020-091. This one deals with uh, hazardous material abatement at Walnut Grove. Uh, as we get ready to demolish the old building, there is some um, abatement requirements. Uh, we're recommending that we award the contract to Three Kings Environmental Incorporated. Uh, their bid was 220,000 plus Washington sales tax. So any questions on that one? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, bid number 2021-003. Uh, this revolves around the improvements at the A pod at the old McLaughlin Middle School. Um, as you may be aware, we're planning to spiff that building up a little bit and relocate our early childhood evaluation center from Leaser campus to that. Um, so our recommendation is inline commercial construction was our lowest bidder. So our recommendation is that you accept bid number 2021-003 to inline construction for $1,083,195.05 plus Washington sales tax. Questions on the APOD? All right, moving on to school buses. Our recommendation here is that you approve purchasing agreement number 2021-007. That's uh, a pretty small year for us in our replacement cycle of, of buses. In this case, we're only replacing or recommending to replace two type D front engine, 12 passenger wheelchair buses. Uh, again, this is part of our ongoing fleet maintenance and replacement cycle. Uh, we use the state bid, um, as you are all as you are all aware. We pay for out of local dollars that we um, already have in the transportation vehicle fund a series of options that go beyond what the state funds through their depreciation. Um, so the total cost of these buses specified to our needs for safety uh, is one hundred and seventy nine thousand eight hundred and sixty four. Uh, dollars and it would be Western bus sales that would uh, receive this uh, purchase order if we were to move forward. Any questions on bus purchases to Western bus sales? All right, then we'll move on to a change order at McLaughlin Middle School for Skanska building. Uh, as you've read, um, there's some con some conditions that are uh, negotiated into the original contract. One of them is the duration that the contractor would be expected to be on site, and there's costs associated with maintaining that construction site, as you've read. Uh, the reality is, is we need to extend that contract period by about three months, um, and you can imagine the contributing factors include COVID, wildfires, 
Um, so far, no plagues of locusts, but um, we'll uh, we'll hope that it's just three months and and the things we've already endured. So um, the record. Brent, I don't know if you're aware, but this is the year for the 17 year lo 17 year cicadas back east. So uh -oh. if you've never experienced it, it's like a plague of locusts. So yeah, <laughs> it's coming, uh -oh. just not here. <laughs> well, let's hope not. All right, so the recommendation is that we approve, uh, that you approve change order um, for McLaughlin Middle School with Skanska USA building in the amount of $170,604 plus Washington sales tax. Questions on this? So just to clarify, this is a three month extension of their kind of on site uh, construction site facility. And we're hoping that everything will be wrapped up, but potentially if it's not, if there's some other, there's cicadas come, for instance, we might have to extend it. Correct. Uh, theoretically correct. I don't, I don't think we're anticipating okay. any further delays. I think we're pretty well into that um, closure of the project. So uh, there's not much left to be done. So I, I think the risk is pretty, pretty minimal, okay. but, but technically that would be correct. Okay. Any other questions? All right, we'll move on to our last item, which is purchase agreement number 2021-005 for iPads for our third through fifth graders. Um, as you've read, this is part of our regular refreshment, uh, device refreshment schedule. A uh, couple other details, um, we are, uh, uh, glad to benefit from Apple financing, providing a four-year lease with no interest cost whatsoever. So um, free money is always a good thing and it allows us to space the payments out along our um, technology levy collections a little bit easier. So the total cost is $2,097,497.61, but you can see our four annual payments will be $524, $524,374.40. So our recommendation is that we move forward with this agreement with Apple to purchase the iPads, barcoding, and cases um, through the four-year lease as specified, inclusive of Washington sales tax. So I know there was a survey that went out about devices earlier I guess it was this winter. Um, and was that more geared towards secondary, middle school, high school device usage? And I, I, I know the, the recommendation references that survey, but I'll let uh, Christina speak to oh. the specifics if you wouldn't mind. Actually, I'll turn it right over to Matt. He's been leading this charge and making sure we had information back from our community on their um, satisfaction level. So Matt? Hey, uh, Kyle, I did go out to both groups. Um, the survey that went out to students of third through eighth grade parents, the sixth through eighth grade parents, it was so that we could start collecting data for next year because we'll be doing the same information for the middle school secondary device. And this will allow us to focus more on what their results were back on the, between devices and how they were used or being used for learning in the middle school model too. But it was from third through eighth grade. And this, we took the information from third through fifth grade parents uh, for this um, data, this information. Okay. So this is kind of the initial step of that in response to the survey for the next year's refresh. Correct. So then this contract, I mean, of our third through fifth graders, how do we cascade down or are we just turning in those kind of expired the four year Sorry, I'm not articulating this well. We're leasing I, for I four it. years. And so then we turn those back in and then like every year we're getting new devices. So we're staying current or? Yes. Uh, could, yeah, I'm sorry. Christina could articulate the, the, the buyback plan, right, Christina? Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll um, get our devices back from our students that are now um, no longer viable and we will clean them up and sell them back to an agent that purchases them and try to get the best price possible. And that money will go back into our levy fund so that we can continue to buy more um, technology as we move through that levy. And we do that with all our refresh cycles. Okay. But these devices are a lease, correct? 
their lease to own with zero oh. dollar at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I missed that in the initial. So thank you. All right, any other questions on the iPads before I turn it back over to Kyle, I think. All right, thank you. Sorry, Brett, we never have many questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so next is policy. So I'll turn that over to Kathy and Marilee. Yeah, so Marilee is going to be addressing about three different policy items. So Marilee, you're on. Thank you. We have three uh, policy recommendations for the board's upcoming board meeting. The first one is policy 2413, equivalency credit for career and technical education courses. The district policy is updated to reflect some new CTE course equivalency academic credit re requirements. Starting September 1st, all statewide equivalency courses will be offered for academic credit. And additionally, the district may adopt local course equivalencies for CTE courses not on the list approved by OSPI. Any questions about that update? The next update is on policy 6220. Uh, there are three changes to this policy. The first one is the proposed language creates a process for approval of district contracts during an emergency. Secondly, the change will um, update the district's bid process for improvements and repairs. And finally, the proposed updates um, clarify the procurement language uh, when procurement occurs with federal funds. Any questions about that one? Okay, the final policy update is policy 6230, relations with vendors. Uh, the state auditor's office recently provided some new guidance on third party receiving, which is that's when the district hires a third party to collect funds on its behalf. And the district's policy is updated to reflect those new provisions uh, from the state auditor's office. Any questions about that one? Thank you. Okay, next we have teaching and learning agenda items. So Dr. Strom um, and team will be addressing two teaching and learning items tonight. So Dr. Strom. Yep, uh, the first one uh, we have before you is a recommendation to approve instructional materials. And there is only one book. And this is a request to approve supplemental um, high school reading language arts uh, material and if there are any questions? I just have one quick question. First of all, um, thank you to the team because you guys are always adding to my reading list. I was looking at this book and it sounds really, really good. Um, my only question is it mentions community standards. Can you just kind of elaborate on what the what the what this standard is we're looking at? Right. I'll ask Darcy to address that as it went through the instructional materials community review process so she can articulate that. Yeah, and this was a request from our honors, ninth grade honors English teacher. Um, and the one concern was that there was an attempted um, rape of a young girl and um, it didn't go, her father came and in time and so it didn't go any farther than that. Um, but that might have, you know, might be a sensitive topic. And this teacher um, is a very experienced, very skilled instructor um, and we felt that for a ninth grade honors English class that it would be um, that she would be able to work through it with the kids. Thank you Darcy. You bet. Any other questions? Okay uh, the second uh, topic is a recommendation to approve a new mascot for Minnehaha Elementary School and uh, uh, pursuant to uh, board resolution 866 and in alignment with uh, uh, Vancouver Public Schools procedure 6970, uh, the Minnehaha Elementary team presents five potential mascot names. Um, uh, Troy is with us this evening and in, a, in accordance with that procedure, uh, the Minnehaha team had uh, was composed of 25 members, 15 adults and 10 fifth grade students. 
uh, representing current students, alumni, faculty, and community. And uh, they created, um, it was created with obviously all of the stakeholders in mind. Uh, they met eight times and uh, definitely committed to a new name for Minnehaha and um, solicited input from the community. They had 60 suggestions and uh, presented to you for your consideration moving forward um, uh, so that um, uh, Mr. Windsor and team can take it to a school vote are uh, the five names, the Cedars, the Mammoths, the Martins, the Mountains, and the Rapids. So we're going from sea to the mountains. And uh, are there any questions? Well, I just want to make one clarification for the other directors. This is for action, as opposed to all the other items on the workshop agenda. This is for action on the 23rd of March. Um, all the other workshop items are for April 13th. Just that clarification, but I'll open it up to questions. I think these are all great suggestions. I don't have a problem with any with any of the five with moving any of the five forward. Yeah, I would I would reiterate that. Thank you, uh, Troy, for all of your efforts in putting together the list. They're they're five great names. Um, I I think they're all great. I I personally really love the mammoths, but uh, but any of them are great. So thank you, Troy. I, I may have a mammoth suit ready to go in my office, just, <laughs> just in case, I don't know. Well, I, I really appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the context of just kind of why the names were chosen. That was just really helpful for me in, in reviewing them, but I, I see no problems. Great. Okay, um, that's all we have for teaching and learning. Okay, so the last item on the agenda, uh, the board will be moving into executive session to uh, evaluate the qualifications of a candidate for appointment to elective office. Um, the board is um, received nine applications for a vacant school board seat that we'll be reviewing those applications tonight. Um, we do believe we will have action to follow um, if we make a selection to choose those uh, any of those applicants um, for interviews next week. So um, I anticipate the conversation to last, I'm going to say 45 minutes. Um, I never know how to gauge this. So I will be back in 45 minutes at uh, 6, 6.12. Um, so with that, the board will be recessing. Thank you.
Uh, I am back to announce that we will be in executive session for approximately 30 more minutes and there will not be action to follow tonight. Thank you.
Okay, we are all back. We have concluded our executive session for the evening and we are adjourning. Thank you.